Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. My name's Jill and uh, I'm a teacher with True North Insight and happy to be with you to share some practice tonight. Um, I heard something this week that really caught my attention and inspired me, uh, a friend and fellow death doula or end of life doula, Sasha Bell. Um, was recently at a hospice training um, in BC and British Columbia, I should say. And uh, it sounds like an excellent training they have out there, like really good. And they, they had this whole panel of um, teachers from a lot of different religious traditions and spiritual traditions, not all religions. Uh, so there was a Tibetan Buddhist, and I think there was a Sufi person, and um, I I can't remember them because I wasn't there, so I won't bother trying to <laughs> complete that list. But to say that one of the elders that was there speaking was a Blackfoot, Blackfeet elder. Um, I, I googled that because in Canada we tend to say Blackfoot, and um, in America, they they um, refer to the Blackfeet Nation. So this was um, Dr. Duncan Grady is his name. Uh, he was a psychologist with um, a doctorate of divinity. And he's an elder in the Circle of Indigenous Nations Society, the Blackfeet Nation. And um, he shared a beautiful teaching. He also gave permission to share the teaching. So um, I'm not going to try to mm, retell his teaching at all. Uh, firstly, because I wasn't there. and But he did give permission to speak about it. Um, there, They were talking about transforming our relationship with the departed, with those that have died. And um he talked about their mm, tradition when someone's died and and the process and what the different symbols mean etc this 49 day practice um but the, he he said uh, sasha shared this one part that really stood out to me um he talked about how what we are is both everywhere and nowhere. I like that, that makes sense to me, everywhere and nowhere. And um, the process of that grieving ceremony that they do um, is part of the transformation from nowhere to being now here. So to go, if you picture or write out the word nowhere, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, and then you put a little space between the W and the H, you have now here. And I'd never heard that. It's like, yeah, it just was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. Nowhere, now here. And it reminds me of when somebody said, you know, the poet Rumi, and they said, they just spelt it, are you, am I? <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, Rumi, are you, am I? Yeah, and another one of those <laughs> little mind shifts. Uh, so that was a segue, nowhere and now here. Um, and so this is not um, Dr. Grady's teachings um particularly but just riffing off that that aspect and what takes us from nowhere to being now here is just that little space just that little pause is all that's needed to make such a radical transformation in our lived awakening and experience um and and uh, 
I don't know what it's like for you, but for me, I, I, when I'm meditating is when I have a little more presence with and capacity to watch the, the antics of the mind. And I can really feel directly and see and know directly that when my mind is off, in some future planning thoughts or back in some past re reworking or revisioning thoughts that I'm really not here. Like I can feel because in that moment of remembering and kind of returning, beginning again, it feels like coming back. Like it's it's not it doesn't feel to me like I'm really here and just having thoughts about being elsewhere. I'm actually like kind of in the grocery store or I'm back in that conversation that happened. I'm back in that room. I don't mean like physically that I've moved, but I really have vacated my body, vacated the present moment. I'm not seeing where I am, smelling, tasting, feeling the sensations of being here. I And sometimes with meditation, it can actually feel the leaving happening. <laughs> Just feels like to me, there's always this direction because my mind has a groove and tends to go into future planning more so than past. We all have different grooves, tendencies. And uh, it feels like I can sometimes just feel the awareness leave up and out and leaving like that. Um, hmm. And so it really, mm, it can be a great awakening practice to ask, many, many, many times through a day or through your meditation practice, same, same, where am I? Just keep dropping that in often. Where am I? Am I nowhere or am I now here? Am I, you know, in the past or in the future? Am I embellishing the present moment in a fantasy? So just, where am I? Where am I? Um, and, it, and then I was reminded of this poem, um, which I'll share in the link below the YouTube recording. One of my favorite poet, poets, uh, Rosemary Witola Tromer, and it's called Filling My Purse with Commas. I just love and so she says all afternoon each time I think I should hurry I pull out a comma such humble punctuation and invite it into the moment and the comma does what it always does which is to invite a pause a small pause of course but a pause long enough to breathe, to notice what else is happening. A slight suggestion that right here is the perfect place to rest. Yes, how funny, I never noticed before that the comma itself looks as if it's bowing, nodding its small dark head to what is encouraging us to find a brief silence and then thus refreshed to go on. Perfect poem. Um, in a, another class this morning, we were talking um, about being, being in the now, uh, among other things, and how The only time that anything is happening is now, now here. And, 
And that even that word, like present moment or the now, we can even create, create something out of that that is not really seen clearly. That even, there's another poem I'm just remembering called Even Now. But anyways, so that even that word now or present can sometimes, we can even grasp onto that as if it's a thing, as if it's a, a moment. But really, when we look closely, it, like all things, is in a constant state of flow. There isn't even, everything is just constantly arising, passing, flowing through. And you can't even point to a moment. Because if you look at a moment, it's made up of milliseconds, etc. And, and on we go into infinity. So just, yeah. Um, so there's a, a little story that's often you may have heard. I believe it has Zen origins. It's it's not in the Theravadan suttas that I found, but it's it's a helpful one. I like it. Um, so there there's um, in in this telling of it, it's a monk, but it certainly could be us or any person um, walking peacefully near a cliff, and and then a tiger comes and is and begins chasing the monk and so the monk running as fast as they can find they come to a place where there's no choice but to leap off the edge of the cliff um, to avoid being eaten and the, as they leap they're able to grab a hold of a vine growing out of the side of the cliff after they've jumped off um yeah so they're holding on to this vine trailing over the cliff and dangling in midair they have the tiger snarling over the edge of the cliff above them can't go back and uh underneath them very long fall to the river of boulders down below and then the story goes on that uh as they're there in that moment, um, a mouse starts nibbling at the vine, <laughs> gnawing at the vine. So then they also see there in this little nook on the edge of the cliff is a strawberry plant with one ripe berry. And of course the monk eats that berry and says it's a very good strawberry <laughs> it's and it's a telling it's a pointing to this what can happen when we really really awaken to being now here or here now because we're all dangling all the time in mid-process between what's already happened and what might happen. We're all there holding on um, in that mid place. And that kind of urgency, that kind of um, brings a lot of energy and it brings a lot of mindfulness to the strawberries of life. It brings a lot of mindfulness to this step, this breath, this taste of water, this dear one, this moonlight, etc. Even to this grief and to this um, anger, to whatever, not just to beauty, to whatever is here, um, we are being called to and asked to and invited to awaken and find a lot of energy in that in that gap 
that brings us to now here instead of nowhere. Yeah, I think that's all. So um, let's practice with this. Our practice is our opportunity to cultivate our ability to awaken, which the more we practice, the more it will translate into our daily lives. Okay. Now, after we settle into the practice, I might read the poem again, just to set the intention for our practice. Adjusting your posture. And I really don't mind if you want to keep the game on in the background, no problem. <laughs> I'm just inviting some awareness along the length of your exhalation as your breath might, might be helpful sometimes to take a few slightly deeper breaths. And really letting that exhalation sigh all the way out. And if there's any sleepiness for you tonight or whenever you're practicing with us, you might invoke or recall that image of being chased by the tiger dangling off the cliff, the mouse gnawing at the vine that you're holding, and uh, use that as a an invitation to some energy, energy that we direct towards wisdom and wakefulness. Every moment so precious and so fleeting. And every day, less and less of these moments to awaken. So here we take our time just to settle, relax, soften. Noticing any areas of tension. And inviting some space around and with that tension, just giving it some space to soften to some degree. Feeling into habit tensions in the face. Across neck and shoulders. belly, hands or fingers, buttocks and legs, whole body relaxing. And as it does, feeling a bit heavier or more grounded. Mm. 
And from that place of ground, feeling that energy up through the spine, that wakefulness and presence, relaxed and alert at the same time. All afternoon, each time I think I should hurry, I pull out a comma, such humble punctuation, and invite it into the moment. And the comma does what it always does, which is to invite a pause, a small pause, of course, but a pause long enough to breathe. To notice what else is happening. A slight suggestion that right here is the perfect place to rest. Yes, how funny, I never noticed before that the comma itself looks as if it's bowing, nodding its small dark head to what is. Encouraging us to find a brief silence and then thus refreshed to go on. It can be helpful for our practice to choose an anchor. If you're used to practicing with open awareness, that can be your anchor. Or you might choose an anchor like feeling the sensations of your hands or feeling the sensations of your breath. Choose an anchor that feels most supportive to you, to your wakefulness, to your steadiness, and to calm. And we'll take these next few minutes of silence to practice together. Just beginning to pay attention to that anchor that you've chosen. Really feeling the sensations that are flowing through moment by moment.
if you find there's not a lot of clarity or energy to pay attention to the anchor anchor then you might bring in again that image of holding on to the vine and the passing of each moment and our intention to wake up to each moment and begin again When you feel some stability with the anchor, this becomes a ground from which we can notice when we are now here or when we are nowhere, when we're elsewhere. You might not notice when it's arising that slipping away. But sometimes it can be noticed in the moments of returning. At some point, awareness notices that we've been elsewhere and remembering happens. Oh, yes, beginning again, returning to the anchor. And see if you can feel that sensation of being elsewhere. And then being now here. And just like that last strawberry, what if these were our last breaths? Can we really awaken to them? and awakening to the joy of feeling another breath arise.
Cultivating the habit of asking often, where am I? Nowhere or now here? Where did you go?
Does your habit of mind tend to take you into future imaginings or past reimaginings or present embellishments? Feel the rest of just being now here. Just relax and ease. Requires some energy and intention. And once we have some stability, we can relax into the pause, into the calma. So I hope there's something helpful for you in that practice and encouragement to check it out through through your days. Um, where am I? And uh, enjoy the strawberries. <laughs>